Hi, here is the demo that we're going to be building today to show off actors in XState and how a parent can spawn a child. So here we have two machines, a parent and a child. Uh, when the parent wakes up, it spawns the child automatically and it's in a waiting state. What we do is we tell the child to wake up and after five seconds, it sends us a message and it lets us know that it's awake and we are now connected. You can see how that updated right there. So that's what we're gonna be building in today's video. Hello everyone, it's David here. And uh, in this video, I'm gonna talk about what the actor's model is and how we could implement that in state machines and specifically the XState JavaScript library. We'll do a quick re recap on what state machines are and what XState is. Uh, but if you haven't, uh, seen my intro to state machines and JavaScript video, I recommend you check that out. I'll post a link into the description. And then once you watch that first video, uh, you can come back here. Okay, so let's do a quick recap. What is a state machine? It's basically a computer program or computer process that uh, has a well-defined set of states. A state machine can be representative of a traffic light. Uh, so, you could imagine a traffic light. Uh, it has a red, yellow, and green state. And those are all the possible states that a traffic light could be at. Actually, maybe it could be out or disabled. So that could be a fourth state. Um, but you get the idea. There's no other possible states that the traffic light could be in. It's very well defined. Um, there's also specific rules that the traffic light has to follow. For example, if you're transitioning from a yellow state, you cannot go back to a green state. It can't go from yellow to green. That would break the state machine's rules. So what is XState? XA is a JavaScript library created by David Korshid. And what it does is it allows you to take your state, state, uh, your state machines and implement them in JavaScript. So it's a library to just give you the tools um, methods, functions, and uh, like a debugging environment to implement state machines in JavaScript. Okay, next let's talk about what the actor model is. You can think of an actor as some kind of computer program, a process. Uh, if you're, you do a lot of object-oriented programming, you can think of it as an object or a class. It has a local state, and that local state is uh, private. It, it can only be manipulated by that actor. Uh, actors can do a couple things. Uh, they could send messages and they could receive messages and they could update their local state. Uh, so you can imagine if you have two actors in a program, they send messages to each other, they react on those messages, they could update their local states depending on what the message is, uh, but they cannot uh, update the state of the other actor uh, because it is private. So that's all the actor's model is. It's pretty simple. I think uh, we, we implement this model quite a bit uh, in software development, but we don't call it an actor's model. So it may sound more complicated than it actually is. I wanna get into how do we implement actors? How do we create new actors? in X state. And uh, I'm gonna show you an example uh, from the docs. It's kind of an arbitrary example, but I think it's important to show a very basic example that um, we could walk through and understand what's going on very clearly. So you could get going and uh, start developing more complex uh, state machines using actors. To demonstrate spawning actors, in X state uh, and using the actors model, uh, we're gonna do a simple demo of a parent machine spawning a new child machine and have the having the parent and the child communicate with each other and updating local state uh, through messaging. So first we have a basic structure of a parent machine here. Uh, you can see it's called parent. Uh, 
It has two states. It's a waiting state and a connected state. We have a context of child. This is where we're going to set the reference to our child state. And the initial state is going to be waiting. So let's start building out that waiting state. And we want to spawn a new child machine. So I have a basic layout here of a child that we're going to build. So I'm just going to pass this one in right now. So we're spawning a child. And, uh, and so we're, we're pretty much done with that. So we've spawned our child machine. Uh, now in our waiting state, what we want to do is on, we want to wait for an event called local.wake. And on this event, uh, we're going to have a couple actions to take. Or actually, sorry, we're just going to have one action. We're going to send a message to the child. So this takes an object, which is the name of the message, which is going to be wake. And then the second parameter is another object. And it has a to property, which is going to take a function. And that function has our context passed into it. And what we do is we reference the child here from what we've created from the child machine. So what's going to happen is we're going to, when we receive this message in our waiting state, we're going to send a message to the child. And that message is going to be wake. So send is in X state. We've got to define it. OK. And when we send that message to the child, we want to wait for another message, like a reply from the child machine. And so we'll name that uh, remote online. So this is going to be a message that's coming from the child. And when we get that, we're going to transition into the connected state. which is going to be our final state right here. OK. Uh, now what we can do is we could build out our child. So the child, we'll, call, uh, we'll give it an ID of child. And we'll build out the states. The first state is going to be offline. And the second state is going to be online. And so what we're going to do is, uh, let's, set, let's set the initial state now. So when this starts up, our initial state is going to be offline. So now in the online state, what we want to do is we want to wait for this event. So on, wake, we want to transition to online. And in the online state, we'll just do this for demo purposes, but we're going to wait. So after five seconds, We are going to take an action and we'll send parent an event to let the parent know that we're now online. Because remember, the parent's not going to know what the child state is. We can only communicate that through messages because each actor has its own state and is private. So the best way to communicate is through messaging. And that is, that's what the actor's model is. So after five seconds, we want to tell our parent, hey, we're, we're online. We're ready to go. 
And you can remember after we send the wake event, we're still in the waiting state and we're, and we're waiting for this remote online event. Okay. And that is our parent child state machine. That is it. Uh, one, one thing you, you may be wondering, why do I have to use this? Um, why do I have to use this function here? Well, the reason is because uh, X state gives you the tools to build out state machines. And what you want to be able to do is easily, uh, easily communicate between state machines without figuring out, about figuring out all the plumbing. So spawn links the child state machine to the parent and creates a hierarchy so that we could just use functions like this, send parent, because X state knows what the parent is of this uh, child machine. It makes it a lot easier. So that's why we use spawn. Um, so what we could do now is we can run this in a state chart so we could visualize what's happening. Okay, this is our uh, visualization tool provided by XState. You can find it at uh, statecharts.io. And what we could do here is we could use this to visualize our state machine. And this is one of the main benefits of using state machines is that we could clearly graph what the states are and how they're interacting. We could see the events that can be called. Uh, we could also see the parent state. So this is our parent state and we can see our child state here. And you can see that it clearly uh, lists out the actions that are possible. Uh, you could, without a state machine, we wouldn't really know what's possible uh, without looking at the code and understanding what the code is doing. But you can see here, we, we already know that, oh, this something's gonna happen after 5,000 milliseconds. What is it? Oh, it's gonna send a remote online event to the parent. It makes it really easy especially for debugging. So as you can recall, we got our parent. It's already spawned the child. We're in our waiting state. And now we want to send that local wake uh, event. And once that happens, that, that event gets sent to the child. And then the child is going to wake, transition to the online state, wait 5,000 seconds, 5,000 milliseconds, and then send event back to the remote, uh, to the parent remote online. And you can see when the remote online event happens, we transition to connected. So let's see this uh, working. We'll click the local wake. You can see now that we're online. And you can see that we transition to connected. And that's it. And you could even open up this tab here and you can see the uh, events that happened in sequence. You can see that we sent the local awake. We transitioned to the wake state. Then after 5,000 milliseconds, we sent an event, remote online. And then we could even see a sequence chart too about what happened. So we can see the, the parent had a local wake. We transitioned to an awake state and then we sent a message back that we're now online. We could also see the final events. Uh, we are in the connected state for the parent and uh, in the child, we're in the online state. And there you go. That is a very simple example of uh, how to spawn uh, new actors or state machines in X state and have a hierarchical uh, state uh, machine graph of child and parent state machines. I hope you all like this video about X state and the actor's model. Let's stay connected. Uh, reach out to me on Instagram or Twitter at Let's Be Lopez and subscribe for more.